who he know who does it better than this I'm the boy you done get it I'm on top of the list trying to get a good signal like a satellite dish every day to me it's like a solar eclipse I Yo, South African Geek, welcome to my channel. About to dive right into another Watch Mojo video right now. It's called The Top 10 Greatest Video Game Boss Entrance. When I think of entrances, for some reason, I think of the Darth Vader entrance in Rogue One. Still one of my favorite Star Wars movie, if not the favorite one. But Revenge of the Sith is also very high on that list. Anyway, let's not waste any time and dive right in. It's all about making a good first impression. Oh Welcome yeah. To and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top ten best. This is gonna have kind of few list, we'll be considering factors that I know. Visuals, editing, and and I'm taking that from the God of War <laughs> entrance alone. Them. Final Fantasy. Number ten, Scarlet. Silent Hill Homecoming. Don't know it. But let's see what it's all about. For an intro that's chilling, tragic, and surreal in equal measure, Scarlet's is a tough one to beat. The sequence takes place in Hell Descent, the horrific manifestation of the mind of child murdering Dr. Fitch, and chills from the start. The haunting music sets the nerves on edge, and the self mutilated body of Fitch instantly draws the eye. However, it's the subversion of the childhood innocence of a simple doll that's the kicker here, and the moment when the one eyed mannequin looks up and says, Daddy, is a real heart stopper. Daddy? Its transformation into Scarlet's twisted God damn, the lighting of the scene, shot, While Fitch's acceptance of his inevitable fate is heartbreaking. All right, directors, take notes. Sound effects, making this a sequence which delivers on all fronts. Forgive me. Number nine, Del Lago, Resident Evil Four. I don't know it. A giant mutated salamander was always going to be a great boss, and Del Lago's intro in Resident Evil 4 is a brilliantly edited sequence that stands with the best. Starting out innocently enough with a couple of Ganados tossing a cop's dead body in a lake, the sequence soon turns terrifying. The graphics are terrible for nowadays though. <laughs> Del Lago is first seen in glimpses, rising from the depths to snatch up a corpse, before a long overhead shot reveals its massive form. The final eruption from the lake is an awesome display of its power, and brings to mind movie classic Jaws as Leon then finds himself dragged around the lake in a deadly game of chase. Throw in some pulse pounding music, and you've got a stunning boss intro. Number 8. Gaping Dragon, Dark Souls. Is that the entrance? <laughs> no boss list would be complete without mention of Dark Souls, and it's the Gaping Dragon which earns a spot here today. The brilliance of this sequence is the okay, way it's mold into a false sense of security. The first glimpse of the dragon suggests it to be a rather cute, unthreatening beast, more suited to Pokemon than Dark Souls. However, this is quickly shown to be merely the tip of the monster's nose as it drags itself from the water and reveals its full horrific majesty. God damn. It's a superb example of creature design. Okay, I'll give you that one. It would be funny if the dragon wasn't so darn terrifying. Number seven, Jack Baker. Resident Evil 7. You kill me, and I just come right on back. It kinda has the same revolving theme. Jack Baker makes a number of horrific entrances in Resident Evil 7, but it's the one that leads into the first fight that makes the greatest impact. It validates Capcom's controversial decision to switch to a first person perspective and ensures Baker's position in Horror Gaming's Hall of Fame. As players desperately try to escape the nightmare that is the Baker residence, they find themselves in the garage arguing with a cop while the door closes ominously in the background. Unexpectedly, Baker appears from nowhere and drives a shovel through the cop's head. Oh shit. Hey, put that door back. Put that door back. Wait! 
It's a simple but effective scene that cuts to the core of Baker's brutality in a heartbeat, which simply wouldn't have been as effective in the series' traditional third-person view. Do I have your attention, boy? You're about to see some wonderful. Number six, Poseidon, God of War oh. Three. Now we're talking. Games don't come much more spectacle-filled than God of War, so for any boss to stand out, it has to be pretty impressive. Poseidon clinches it for us. I actually still have God of War 3. Engines that mixes arrogance, visual splendor, and cheesy dialogue to superb effect. You challenge me, mortal. The God of Olympus? It's the sheer scale here that's staggering, with not one, but two gods vying for screen time, as the scene takes place on Gaia's back. Once Poseidon and Kratos have finished their bombastic exchange, there's an epic punch-up that's visceral in the extreme, as both warriors use all the powers at their disposal. What follows square, is a square, square, square. <laughs> masterpiece that brings all those Clash of the Titans fantasies to life. Mm. Number 5. Scarecrow. Batman Arkham Asylum. In my world now. And now we're talking, man. Eh? It was a little rocky at the beginning. Batman's most fearsome foe, an insane genius intent on sowing chaos with his dreaded fear toxin. In Arkham Asylum, he gets an introduction that mixes his disturbing appearance with his love of mind-bending psychology to create a boss battle that isn't just visually striking, but which reflects his personality in the action. Players take on a series of nightmarish Damn. challenges. To actually while think about it, Arkham looms over everything, night is so old now. Without his own sanity, it's an impressive and rare blend of character and gameplay that lingers long after the fight is over. How are you doing this? Number four, Ridley, Super Metroid. <laughs> They throw in a classic in the mix. One for the retro fans here, and boy does he make an impression. At the very start of the game, Samus is tasked with responding to a distress signal from a space station she had just departed from. When she arrives, she finds dead bodies of scientists all over the place, but no sign of what killed them, until she makes it into the room housing the Metroid larva. Slowly but surely, players are greeted with a single glowing eye appearing out of the darkness, which then reveals itself to be Ridley. That was high the key cinematic. Without a suitably creepy roar, and while its alien-like appearance is memorable, it's his build-up that makes this a classic. Number three, Darth Vader, Star Wars Jedi: Fallen Order. Is it like Rogue One? Darth Vader is perhaps cinema's most enduring villain, and in 2019 Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, he gets a dramatic entrance deserved by mm. such an icon. All the details are spot on, from the heavy footsteps and labored breathing that herald his arrival, to the horrified expression on Inquisitor Trilla's face as she realizes her impending fate. The low camera angles emphasize his menace, and his dialogue is lean and efficient. However, it's the brutal ease with which he dispatches Seer and his casual slaughter of Trilla that reminds us he's not just a pantomime villain, but the ultimate force of evil in the galaxy. Avengers. <laughs> Number two. Twin I gotta Nova, check that Legend game out. Zelda, Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Another brilliant Nintendo entrance here that once again shows that they go from recent to count. So in this old. case, it's the sound recent as much as the visuals which carry the day, and the hideous cackling which heralds the appearance of the twin witches Kome and Kotake is a guaranteed spine chiller. It gets better though, with a wonderfully choreographed sequence that's wreathed in fire and ice. That final moment where the witches fly over Link and he gazes in wonder at them emphasizes both his naivety and their stature and makes this sequence worthy of Walt Disney himself. Mm. 
Want more video game content? Check out our gaming channel Mojo Plays and discover games and ideas you never knew existed. With more lists, we got a gaming channel. Our latest now. series, Arcade Roulette. Justin and John are in. Oh. Hey, is that Porky Pig? Mm. There's a lot of things being ripped off in this game. Number one, Malice, Shadow of the Colossus. What happened to God of War? The recent one. I saw it in the entrance office. For a game that's all about boss battles, you'd expect but I Shadow get it. of the Colossus to deliver the goods, and it certainly doesn't disappoint. Picking the best one is the hard part, however, but we went for Malice, the game's final boss. What's clever about his introduction is its subtlety. With its slow pan up a vast edifice, while a storm rages in the background, and with two flaming torches providing the minimalist lighting. I mean, like, love how cinematic these are getting. It's only as the camera continues upwards that the player realizes that the building is Malice, as two mighty hands uncurl and his eyes burn through the gloom. It's a classic case of hiding in plain sight and sets the stage for an equally impressive showdown, making Malice a worthy win. Damn, you can barely see yourself. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. It's like the, the dopa I found them came from the fact of how cinematic they actually were. So the more cinematic they got, the more dope I thought it was. Tell me what you guys thought. Which one do you think they got wrong? What's your top 10 list? Anyway, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I haven't played a lot of games, so I could probably not even give you my top 10 list. Maybe subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Deuces.